also have to talk about the F1 Academy because the F1 Academy yes. is back. Um, it is. I I understand why they don't have as many race weekends. They have seven. Um, but it's I do feel that it is a little bit weird that, you know, we had their first race in Saudi Arabia and then they haven't done anything. And, you know, now we're in Miami and then they've got another month and a half until their next uh, race in Barcelona. Um, so it's just like, it, it's just, I love the F1 Academy and I want to see more of them, uh, which I know like, patience yes and they they will continue to grow out of you know more than just seven weekends but like I want to see more now right but I do think how they have their schedule set up it's good because they get races they get a really good global reach and they get races in different places and it's also reasonable amount of time in between races because I would like Another way you can think about it is like, oh, what if we just do the first seven or the last seven races of the season, which would be horrible, right? So like, I I do get the schedule. Do I want it to expand it? Absolutely. Um, But I understand it. And and I think it makes sense with like where the races are so that there's like a good mix of of viewership and different countries uh, for them to experience. Yeah, and speaking of global viewership, they're going to get even more of that. And I'm so excited because they announced yesterday that they are going to be getting basically the Drive to Survive treatment with a full docu-series um, produced by Reese Witherspoon's um, production company, Hello Sunshine, that will be on Netflix in 2025. So I'm really excited to see, you know, even more of the behind the scenes of the F1 Academy than we're already, we're get, already getting a ton, a ton of access because they have everything up on, on YouTube, on F1 TV, um, on, on Twitter. Um, but I'm really excited to see the behind the scenes and for them to be able to follow these drivers um, and for us to really get a feel of what it's like to be a woman in motorsport in 2024. Yeah. Also, I'm just really excited to see Susie in action because we're going to oh, get yes, more, a lot more of that, Susie. Please. I'm very excited. Which, okay. Also... Love Martin Brundle, but I have a bone to pick with him because on Mm -hmm. the gridwalk, he talked to Susie and Susie was, you know, she was like, she was there with Charlotte Tilbury. I thought Charlotte Tilbury was very well spoken. She knows what she's talking about. It's cool to see that her sponsorship of a car in F1 Academy is not random. Like she was talking about how her and her dad, you know, she grew up watching races with her dad and she's really into it. So that's really cool to see. Like she actually has a connection versus just like throwing a random sponsorship on a car. But Susie was standing there with her and and Martin walked away and was like, of course, you know, that's Susie, Susie Wolf, Total Wolf's wife. <laughs> and I'm like, no, oh, no, she's not. She's like head, you know, she's the, I don't know. She's just, managing she director. Is, what, yeah, whatever it is. She is, she is the F1 Academy, um, which just made me mad and sad for him to say that. But I think, unfortunately, when your husband's Total Wolf, you will always be. Total Wolf. The wife of Total Wolf. Yeah, yeah no, it exactly. was, it was, and, and to, to speak back about uh, Charlotte Tilbury, I, I really like that not only was, is it, you know, that she's sponsoring it, but she's actually involved. Like there's been right. a ton of, you know, par- you know, marketing sponsorship partnerships that they've been doing all weekend long. She's here, she's invested in it. She gave out the trophies in, in the first race. So it wasn't like, yeah, I'm going to write you guys a check for some money so you can put my, my, you know, brand on a car. She, you know, there's actual real involvement. Um, um, that's, I think it, it is really cool and really great to see just how much of this investment there has been in, um, from not just Charlotte Tilbury, but you know, Formula One itself, all the different brands, it's been really exciting to see. And even this weekend in Miami, like Kendall Jenner, who, you know, does, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, she's a Kardashian, whatever, Karjan clan, whatever, but she does right. have an interest in, in cars and motorsport. Like that's always kind of been her thing. So seeing her there for not only the Grand Prix, but really there for the F1 Academy and talking with Susie and a bunch of like the, you know, wags of Formula One drivers were all supporting F1 Academy. So it is really cool to see so much support from big people. And it's not just like a random support race. Like they do have eyes on them. They're getting a Netflix show. And we've always talked about the more eyes you have on something the more sponsorship comes in, the more money you have, the more successful you're going to be. So I think this is a huge step for them. I really, really do. 
Yeah, it was great. I mean, even, you know, Alpine's team principal was there to congratulate Abby Poling, who won both races this weekend and both right. poles um, this this weekend for, for her, her first, you know, race win. Obviously, the second race in Saturday, she was promoted to P1 after Dorian Pond was given a penalty for taking the checkered flag twice, which is still really awkward. Um, but this was this was her first actual race win. I thought it was really funny. Um, the, the commentators for the F1 Academy, when they were going to the podium, were like, and Abby Pulling can actually celebrate by drinking the champagne in the United States because she has turned 21 since the last time F1 Academy race. Cause these, these drivers are very young. Leah Block sure. who's kind of the, um, who's one of the two American drivers. She's only 17. I don't know how old Chloe, Chloe Chambers is. Um, but she's the other American driver. She's driving for Haas. She had, she's had Haas's first podium ever yeah in which the is first really race. cool which is amazing um dorian pond she had a solid weekend um she's the mercedes driver um abby pulling really said not so fast you know dorian is is not going to be guaranteed to to win this championship she was in p2 and, and p3 um respectively for the two races but really you know abby pulling was just light speed ahead this this weekend um so it was you know it, it's nice to see a that the championship race you know has not been decided as early on as, as we may have expected after saudi arabia um, but B, we're seeing a lot more of, you know, mixing up in, in the grid itself because we've had, you know, two different podiums um, for, you know, for the most part, Bianca Bustamante, who's the McLaren driver, she podiumed on race two. Um, so it was, it was really cool to see, you know, how it, it's a little bit easier to, to move up in the points when you're in the F1 Academy, because those cars are a little bit smaller, so you can overtake a lot easier. And there was a lot of overtaking and a lot of really exciting racing between the two races. Yeah, and something that you brought up, which I I missed, n wasn't aware of, is their qualifying process. So yes, yeah. So talk. I want to. You can explain it because you're better at explaining it. But I want to talk about this because this is so weird. Yeah, I I don't know how I feel about it. I've seen it being implemented in two races, and I I I don't love it. But the way it works is you have one qualifying session that's. 30 minutes long and basically you drive as fast as you can for 30 minutes and the fastest lap times um, in that session determines the grid for the first race and the grid for the second race is determined by your second fastest lap. So driver A lap their fastest lap is their qualifying for the first race their second fastest lap is qualifying for their second race so in total they take yeah. what like 30 lap times and put it into race one, race two, right? Because I mean, it's closer to because it's, it's yeah. It's, I mean, they're not going to drive 30, 30, you know, thirty. No, 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 30 no sorry, I'm saying like a total of thirty yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. drivers to each. Yeah. So yeah, in terms of just you know relating this to F one because I feel like that's easiest. That would be like instead of having Q1, Q2, Q3, drive for 30 minutes, try and put up two really fast lap times and hope for the best. Yeah, kind of. Which I don't think I you think, can get away with in F1 because there's there, there'd be too much traffic. Um, but I just, I think what's hard to wrap my head around is there's, you know, they're tracking the fastest times for each driver during that session, but you don't know what those second fastest times are until afterwards, like yeah. way after the fact. And they're like, here's your grid for, for the second race. And that's what I really don't love about it. Um, is that like you, like you, you're not going to be able to figure that out just by watching qualifying. No. And it's like, what would what I would think would make more sense is like you have quality for the first race, the first race is grit, like final standings is your grid for the second race. Yeah, that's I mean, obviously, that's what the sprint format used to, to be in 2021 right. for Formula One. Um, and it's it's not bad. It's just from a, a fan tracking perspective it's really difficult to follow and I think that that would make things complicated for you know you know Formula One Academy fans who are like well how does how does the grid for race two get set and and nobody really understands that answer unless you're you know you've you've looked into it a lot where the like the fair weather fan isn't probably going to do so bottom line now that F1 Academy is being um 
televised. They just need better graphics. Yeah, they they would need a graphic to to show where that second fastest lap is going to be, and even the broadcasters don't really know that off the fly while while they're while they're going. Um, so it it just they they need a little bit more clarification on how they're going to present that, you know, to the audience as they're going. I mean, and you know, it's and we've and, talked and, about this. It's growing pains. Like it's the first yeah. year of it being truly televised and I'm sure they'll work out the kinks, but that does seem weird that it's hard to tell and no I mean, I'm sure the teams do because they have so much data and stuff, but it's kind of hard to be like monitoring and watching and I don't know. It also right. seems I mean, super it, stressful that you would have to put two really fast laps up in 30 minutes and not I don't know. I mean, I guess in F1, yeah. you have to do three to like make it out of the certain qualifying sessions. But still, it's it seems odd to me. It's it's it it is it is odd to me, and I, I don't love it. I don't think we're gonna see it for very long. But it, it it's just it's it's something that I wanted to point out that is weird. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. And then before we move on and talk about our predictions, I just want to give an update on the the standings real quick. Um, Abby Pulling is way ahead after winning both races. She's got 99 points. Dorian Pond is in P2 with 65 points. And then Maya Voog, um, who's the Ferrari driver, she's in third with 51. Um, So the battle of the top three is currently still what we expected it to be out of those three drivers. Um, But there's been a lot more movement in the, you know, the the middle part of that field. And you know, beyond P3. And then from a constructor standpoint, we've got a really close battle right now, which is, I was a little worried that we weren't going to have, um, but we've got Prima racing in the lead with 124 points. Um, Rodin is um, in second with 122 points. Compros racing is a little bit further behind um, with 82 points. Chloe Chambers um, with Haas, she drove, uh, drives for, for Compos, so she gave them a little bit of a boost this weekend. Um, fourth is ART Grand Prix with 46 points, and then fifth is MP Motorsport with 42, so they're kind of way in the back and have a little bit of work to do. Perfect. Awesome. Well, yeah, yeah. so like we were talking about, this is the second of seven races with the F1 Academy and they are televised this season. So you do get to watch and every race weekend that they have, we will be giving updates. Yes. And their next race weekend is going to be in Barcelona. So we will see you all again, talking about F1 Academy in uh, June at some point in June. A little bit of a ways, but we will get there.